128. Uh, f of x equals x minus 4 over 5. So same thing, I'm going to go ahead and switch everything out and say x equals y minus 4 over 5. Solve for the y, multiply both sides by 5. I get 5x equals y minus 4. Add a 4 to both sides equals y. So I would say f of inverse x equals 5x plus 4. And then to check it, i got to plug it in. So I'm going to plug this into that x. See if I can squeeze that over here. And I'm saying 5x plus 4 all minus 4 all over 5. Combine like terms right there. Okay, so that works. And then the other way around, take this, plug it in right there. So that's 5 times x minus 4 over 5 plus 4. Those 5s reduce out. I get x minus 4 plus 4. That's a 0 and x. So that did work as well. Okay. Uh, 129. Uh, do it algebraically. And we want to show, okay, so we don't, we don't have to do the graphical or the numerical ones. We're just going to do the algebraic ones. So we're basically going to repeat the process that I just did up here. Here's the checking part, okay. So this is 129, all right. So we're looking at f of x equals 3 minus 4x and g of x equals 3 minus x over 4. So plugging these in, okay, so <coughs> remember I'm going to do f of g of x and it needs to equal x just like I did. So take this one, I get 3 minus 4 times 3 minus x over 4. Okay, and work this out. Um, so I get 3 minus, the 4 is reduced, I still got this negative sign floating around in there though. Okay. Distribute the negative. All right, so that's going to work. That's x. And then I'm going to plug this one into that one. Don't lose that negative sign. Those reduce and those reduce. There we go. Okay. So that worked out. 131, they want us to um, graph the function and then do the vertical line, uh, horizontal line test to determine if it's a one-to-one -one function. So um, 131. Okay, so hopefully you should recognize that you can graph that one pretty easily. It's got a uh, y-intercept negative 3, uh, 1 over 1. So it's just a line kind of down here. Well, that's going to pass. Okay, so that is 1 to 1. That's going to pass the horizontal line test. Okay, uh, number 132, we should be able to graph that one as well. That's a pretty easy one to, from the parent function. It's to the right one space, and it's an upward-facing parabola. You can see that that is not 1 to 1. One thirty-three. Sorry, not the one thirty-three. It comes in number one thirty-four. Um, should recognize that one as well. That it just shifts me to the left six spaces and goes like this, and that is also one to one. It's also one to one. Then we're looking at 34 and then 135. Find the inverse again. Um, so we'll go ahead and go through the process and do it, what I did earlier. So 135, so I'm going to switch the x and the y's. Okay. 
add a 5 to both sides, multiply both sides by a 2, don't forget to distribute that, okay. there you go, 136, 7x, okay, so same thing, I'll switch the x and the y's, multiply both sides by 8, subtract 3 to both sides, divide by 7. I'm going to rewrite this as F inverse. One thirty nine. So switch the X and the Y's. Square both sides. All right. Track ten. Right. So F inverse equals X squared minus ten. One forty one. Okay. So that's a parabola, but they give us a domain constraint, so it is it is one to one because it's basically if you graphed it, then you'd only graph half, so it is one to one, kind of like that. Um, so f of x equals one over four x squared plus one. Switch the x and the y's. Right. So track one to both sides. Multiply both sides by 4. Okay. So it's 4 times x squared or x minus 1. I'm going to leave it like that. Take the square root. Okay. And then. <coughs> Looking at this, so this is actually going to be 2 square root of x minus 1 is equal to y. Okay. So f inverse x I think that is it.